And thanks for keeping it KTN News here on KTN Business Today with me, Abi Agena. Well, as you know, Uchumi Supermarkets is one of the retail stores in the country that has been posting some serious turnarounds around the company's uh, future. Well, I had a sit down with the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Julius Kipnitich, who has the right to say his feedback around where is the company moving forward and indeed a lot around the expectations. Here's a snippet of that interview. There's been a lot of speculation, but Uchumi is not going to close shop and uh, it will always it will be one of those stores that will thrive into the future. Uh, of course, it has had a trouble past, and this is not the first trouble Uchumi has had. Uh, in fact, from the records I found here, this is the fourth. But uh, will it recover from now? Of course, yes. So we have deciphered what those issues are, and we are clear that uh, Uchumi will recover. Well, Uchumi CEO there, Dr. Julius Keeping It Teach. Of course, we have the full interview that we will be bringing it up later on. And now let's get into that interesting discussion around corporate governance, issues with ethics, servant leadership. I'm now joined by Dr. Kate, Kent Keith, who has a very long title. And let me just refer to him as a leadership expert this afternoon, if you may allow that. Thank you. It's good to be here. Glad to have you as well. Perhaps you did have a conference happening in Naivasha around servant leadership. What were some of the key areas of discussion in that particular uh, conference? Well, I think the, the focus really is how to, to run a business that is both ethical and practical. And I think that's why servant leadership has something important to offer. Um, what's really interesting to me is that the modern servant leadership movement was launched by a businessman. His name was Robert Greenleaf. Uh, he worked for, for AT&T uh, from 1926 to 1964 at a time when it was the biggest corporation in the world, or one of the biggest, with more than a million employees. Awesome. And his, his title was Director of Management Research. So what his job was to do is to figure out how to, to train and educate the leaders of the world's biggest corporation to be as effective as possible. Mm -hmm. And what he discovered over 38 years was the most effective were the ones who were focused on serving others. Uh -huh. So they were serving colleagues, they were serving customers. So his, his whole concept was that the servant leadership would be ethical. What he was able to show was that it's also very practical. And that's a wonderful combination. You're not being asked to be ethical instead of practical or practical instead of ethical. It's really both. Quite uh, a mouthful of words, ethical <laughs> and issues to do with governance. Yeah. Looking at um, the recent developments, especially in Kenya, we've had cases of uh, managers being implicated in uh, mismanaging companies. Perhaps what would be your input in how can managers best serve in their positions of influence as well as ensure that the country is actually managed in the right way? You know, um, my understanding of servant leadership is that it can work anywhere in the world. And it, the interesting thing is that um, from Greenleaf's own experience in business, he said it starts not with a desire to lead, but with a desire to serve. And so you start by, by figuring out how to identify and meet the needs of others. And I think that's a wonderful uh, way of looking at governance and, and leadership because your real question is, you know, who are we here to serve? How can we serve them best? What are their needs? What are the needs of employees? How can we help them perform at their highest possible levels? What are the needs of our customers, or clients, or patients, or members? That's, that's who we're here for. How do we get really close to them and understand what they need so that we can provide it? And if we do, they're going to be happy. They're going to tell their friends. The organization's going to be successful. Uh -huh. So it starts with this idea that we're here to identify and meet the needs of others. Uh, another key concept for servant leaders, and this certainly at the, at the governance level, is a focus on growing people. That when people in the organization are growing, it's a triple win. The, the employee grows and, and is able to develop his or her capacity, their potential. That enhances the capacity of the organization, which again makes it easier for them to serve the customer. So the individual, the organization, the customer are all, all win. Uh -huh. A special responsibility at the governance level is one of the key things of servant leadership, which is caring about all stakeholders, everyone that the organization touches. So it's employees, it's, it's customers, it's creditors or shareholders, it's you know, vendors, business partners, it's the community. 
and taking that into account. And there's some wonderful research that suggests that when you do take into account your impact and the needs of all your stakeholders, in the long term, you're going to run a better profit. Uh -huh. Many say that Africa is, it's not a question of the leaders that Africa has, but Africa has not developed because it is mismanaged. That's the general uh, thread across. Perhaps looking at the different settings across um, the continent, um, areas around corporate governance have remained such a touchy subject, issues to do with ethics. How can managers embrace ethics and sort of generate a culture amongst the employees? Because look at a case like, you might not be quite familiar with it, but one of the retail stores, Uchumi Supermarkets, it actually got into a situation where there are issues around the managers being involved, allegedly being involved in issues to do with uh, insider trading and all that kind of thing. So it has a new manager in place, and the manager is quite vocal around corporate governance, trying to push the ethics agenda. I don't know, how can companies uh, embrace best practice, practices, actually? I think it's really important that uh, anyone who assumes a leadership position in a company be someone who understands ethical issues and has developed a track record of sensitivity to ethical issues, has been ethical, in fact, because, you know, people watch the leader. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of research that shows that when the leader is not ethical, and this is, this is not in Kenya, this is everywhere, mm -hmm. when the leader is not ethical, other people figure they don't have to be either, yeah. and it can really bring the whole corporation down. So I think the first thing you can do is make an understanding of ethics and a track record of, of ethical performance a key prerequisite to being promoted to a leadership position in the first place. I think a lot of this has to do with what is leadership and what are we here for. And in the United States, there's been a huge shift toward, toward pleasing shareholders at the expense of others. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it really helps the ethical climate when you take into account the needs of everyone that's touched by the corporation. So mm -hmm. part of it is, is deciding what is leadership, why are we here, what are we trying to achieve, and I would certainly um, urge that people be trained in ethics, be promoted for ethical behavior, mm -hmm. um, and make it really important, not a side issue, but a central issue. Do you think one day in time we'll have a world where servant leadership will be so advanced to a point that issues to do with scandals, issues to do with corruption will end? <laughs> or it's, it's just <clears throat> being uh, overly that's a, ambitious? That's a very exciting world that you're, you're imagining <laughs> there. No, I think, I think there will always be uh, difficulties and challenges. B human beings, you know, we're, we're flawed, we have, we have our faults. But we can do far better than we're doing now. And again, the ultimate goal of servant leadership is to, to help people grow, to, to really contribute to society, to, to be more productive, to make the world a better place. It's a, it's a big goal, um, and, and it really is achievable, and I believe it's achievable uh, around the world. It's not easy, problems don't go away, but the way that you approach them is different, and, and that, I think, in the end, can make a huge difference. Indeed, perfect place to end it, unless you have a quote you might want to leave our viewers with. You know, I, I really think that servant leadership is it's ethical, it's practical, it's meaningful. Um, it's almost common sense. If we pay attention to people and help them get what they need, we're going to succeed and we're going to treat them right. It's going to be ethical. Many thanks there, Dr. Kent You're welcome. Keith, My pleasure. Giving us some interesting, um, should I say, pointers around corporate governance, issues with ethics, as well as servant leadership, saying that you should lead by example.